On today's show, the BMW i8 Roadster and refreshed i8 Coupe brake cover in Los Angeles, the long-range variant of the Tesla Model 3 receives an official EPA rating of 500 kilometers per charge, and Lucid Motors gets a nice new headquarters. These stories and more coming up next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, a professional musician turned electric vehicle crusader, and I'm here to bring Kiwis a weekly roundup of the biggest news stories around the world in relation to cleaner, greener transport. As always, thanks for joining me. We're starting at the Los Angeles Auto Show, going on right now, where BMW unveiled the long-awaited BMW i8 Roadster, as well as a refreshed version of the BMW i8 Coupe. Aside from looking gorgeous, topless, the BMW i8 Roadster features a cloth soft top that can open and close in just 15 seconds at speeds less than 50 kph, that's 30 miles an hour. Like the refreshed i8 Coupe, it features a larger capacity 11.6 kWh battery pack that should double all electric range and gives a 4.4 second sprint time for the Coupe, which is 4.6 for the Roadster. Combined with a more powerful motor that allows a faster all electric operation, both versions should be a little better from a fuel efficiency point of view. They look stunning and I'm sure they'll sell to wealthy customers, at least until the new Tesla Roadster 2 launches. Despite the argument you may have just had with your crazy uncle at Thanksgiving, it's official. Electric cars are far more affordable to operate than petrol ones. That conclusion isn't hard to reach if you live in countries like the UK or New Zealand, where high fuel taxes are common. But now the Union of Concerned Scientists has published a study showing that even in the US, where petrol prices are super low, electric vehicles can save you as much as $770 in fuel costs every year. And with electric cars charged from the most dirty fossil fuel mixes, still better for the environment than using petrol, it's really a no-brainer to make the switch. Back to LA for this next story where Toyota announced what will be the world's first megawatt renewable power and hydrogen generation station. Set to be built near Long Beach Port, the aptly named TriGen facility will turn bio-waste from California's agricultural industry to produce 2.35 megawatt hours of electricity and 1.2 tonnes of hydrogen per day. The electricity will go towards powering Toyota logistics services at Long Beach Port, while the hydrogen will be used to power the Class 8 hydrogen fuel cell trucks Toyota will be putting into service there as part of a trial program into hydrogen-powered big rigs. There's no set date for when the plant will be completed, but I'm guessing that it will be sooner rather than later. Elon Musk may have recently misunderstood recent governmental enthusiasm for the boring company's proposal to build a tunnel system up the eastern seaboard, but now Musk's latest transportation company is putting in a bid to build and operate a high-speed loop connecting Chicago's O'Hare Airport to downtown Chicago. According to the Chicago Sun-Times, the city is asking for proposals for a high-speed rail link that will whisk travelers downtown in less than 20 minutes from O'Hare using either an above or below ground transit solution. With the closing date for proposals due January 23rd, there's plenty of time for the boring company to properly spec things out, and I guess we're going to maybe even see a Hyperloop proposal, although that's just a personal guess of mine, nothing more. Next up, it's time for a quick reminder about Ecotricity's Eco Wholesale Energy product that could be saving you up to $400 a year on your home electricity bill or $4,000 on your business electricity bill. It works by linking you directly to 100% renewable wholesale prices after you pay a small admin fee. And it's the most affordable carbon zero certified electricity that Kiwis can buy. So make sure you sign up and start saving those pennies today by following the link below. German automaker BMW is already doing a lot with electric cars, but this week it admitted that it's on the lookout for partners within the auto industry that can help it make the mini brand completely electric. 
Why a partner? Well, like other automakers, BMW was keen to lower the costs associated with going all electric, and working with a rival on a joint platform is one of the tried and tested methods out there. And while it's talking to Chinese companies about electrification, BMW says it's also talking quietly to other major automakers. At the moment, no partner has been announced, but I could see BMW pairing with Toyota on this, as it already has an established partnership there that could easily give BMW an all-electric mini platform and Toyota the much-needed catch-up in electric vehicles that it so desperately needs. It's been on sale to Tesla employees for some time, but last week, Tesla officially opened up the ordering process for the Tesla Model 3 to non-Tesla employees. And as part of that, we received official EPA ratings for Tesla's most affordable electric car to date. Given Model 3 is only being produced with its optional long-range pack at the moment, we've yet to get ratings for the shorter-range Model 3, but, says the EPA, Tesla does indeed manage to get 310 miles 500 kilometers on the combined EPA test cycle, with Model 3 raising to 322 miles 518 k's in the city. Drive on the freeway at higher speeds and you'll see a range of 295 and a half miles that's 475 k's, which is still more than enough to get you in between superchargers without range anxiety. I can't wait to see what the standard battery pack will be rated at, but I guess I'm going to have to wait, eh? Tesla's Model 3 may have all the range we've been promised, but it seems at least, according to some reports this week, that things are far from good at the Fremont production facility. Over the Thanksgiving break, Bloomberg published an article in which it calculated that Tesla has been burning through $8,000 per minute for the past year as part of its rush to bring Model 3 to market. Then, earlier this week, Reuters published a candid interview with nine current and former employees in which workers admit that more than 90% of Tesla Model S and Model X cars are coming off the Fremont production line and needing to spend additional time in Tesla's repair facilities before leaving the factory to rectify build issues. Combine this with Toyota, for example, which Reuters helpfully notes has a 10% rate of cars needing post-production fixes, and it's a worrying sign. For Tesla to succeed, and it needs to, and I want it to, it needs to get a handle on this very high fault rate, because it's eating up money to fix problems that it shouldn't have to worry about. If you've been following Faraday Futures fortunes of late, you'll know things haven't been looking all that good for the company that wanted to beat Tesla at its own game. And this week, we heard from Business Insider that the company is running out of time to raise more than the half billion dollars it needs in its Series A round funding. You see, right now, it has more than $400 million in convertible notes that are due to be paid off at the beginning of December, and at the moment it hasn't reached the magic number. What's worse, those notes are at 12% interest, meaning the company could be dead at the start of January unless it gets some super mercy level res PDQ. While Faraday Future is struggling, Lucid, another EV startup wanting to chase Tesla, has just announced its move to a new headquarters in California. Twice the size of the original facility where the Lucid Air was revealed, Lucid is hoping that it will continue to grow and bring its Lucid Air to market as soon as possible. Just like Tesla and Faraday Futures before it, however, Lucid is in that terrifying position where its first product has yet to launch, but it's burning through cash to make that launch happen. Here's hoping it follows in Tesla's tire tracks, not Faraday Futures. I'm often asked about where raw materials to make lithium-ion battery packs for electric cars come from, and so very often the uncomfortable subject of environmental and social ethics comes to mind. You see, just like other mining operations, some mines in certain parts of the world are known to have underhand practices, employing child labor or paying unfair salaries, and this week we heard that there's a new pledge being made by a number of vehicle manufacturers to only buy raw materials for its electric vehicles from ethical sources. Among those signing on are Volkswagen, Toyota Motor Europe, Ford, Daimler, BMW, Honda, Jaguar Land Rover, Volvo Cars, Scania and Volvo Trucks. It's not clear where other automakers are on the list, but I think it's about time we ask directly where the materials for electric vehicle battery packs come from and make sure, just like sweatshops, that we don't support companies who can't account for the ethics of where those battery materials come from. And finally, more and more on this show, I'm covering flying electric vehicles, be they drones, 
flying cars or airplanes. And this week, we're finishing with the news that Airbus, Rolls-Royce and Siemens have all teamed up to work on a future electric plane partnership. At the same time, they've unveiled the EFLAN X Hybrid Electric Flight Demonstrator, a test platform which will replace one of the four gas turbine engines on the plane with a 2 megawatt electric motor, and eventually, if that goes well, a second 2 megawatt electric motor to help the plane fly in zero emission mode when needed. Given air flight does pay a part in global emissions, it's going to be great to see this transition take place. So here's to an all-electric future for air travel. And with that exciting thought, it's time for me to bring another episode to a close. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, be sure to send it our way. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness. So make sure you hit that notification bell to find out the minute a new show is uploaded. Oh, and before I go, I'd like to thank the Sustainable Business Network, which gave Ecotech a special commendation last night at its awards ceremony for the work we've done educating and entertaining Kiwis on the latest and greatest clean vehicle and energy news. So thanks to everyone who's watched, supported us thus far, and here's to many, many more happy shows. As always, enjoy your weekend, make sure you do something fun, and don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.